Good morning, this is Mission Control Houston. We are live inside the International Space Station Flight Control Room awaiting the installation of the Cygnus cargo vehicle to the International Space Station. This is a live view from the outside of the station as we're orbiting around the Earth, 252 statute miles currently above the Earth, just over China, across, about to cross over into an orbital nighttime. Leading the teams here today are the flight control team from this morning that oversaw the capture of Cygnus's cargo vehicle for its ninth contracted resupply mission to the International Space Station. Right there in the white shirt, Flight Director Judd Freeling. Uh, next to him is the Capcom Cindy Kester. Behind is visiting vehicle officer VVO Mark Anderson, who has been communicating with NASA officials in Dulles, Virginia, relating vehicle status and updates to the flight director, especially over the capture events this morning. There's a live view from Dulles, Virginia. That team uh, led by mission director Tony Foti uh, from this morning. Now aboard the International Space Station, you can see the Cygnus cargo vehicle in view, uh, positioned right in front of the common berthing mechanism. Uh, that's where it will be actually berthed later today after second, second stage uh, berthing. Uh, we'll go over that in just a few minutes. This is a view from the common berthing mechanism. Uh, right now holding just a few uh, uh, few meters, few centimeters actually, away from the common berthing mechanism. Um, uh, before they go in, the crew inside this space station is wrapping up some exercise, uh, just constraints for the vibration environment of the space station, waiting for them to wrap up their exercise and call down that everything is clear and they can begin moving the Cygnus into its berthing position. From this camera view, you can see uh, most of the, that metallic structure is the pressurized volume of uh, the Cygnus cargo vehicle inside 7,400 pounds of supplies and equipment, including experiments that will be brought on board the International Space Station. Earlier this morning, the same flight control team oversaw the rendezvous and capture of the Cygnus cargo vehicle. It was Scott Tingle and uh, Ricky Arnold inside the cupola workstation of the space station. You can just barely make out the cupola at the bottom of the screen. It's right next to the uh, uh, beam right there. This is a replay of that capture. On station line two. Houston's with you on two. Go ahead. Just so wanted to give you a heads up that uh, Cevus and ARED are no longer in use. Copy. We with that. We will start our no exercise constraints. Station copies. Now that was a video replay of the capture from this morning. That capture time, 4.26 a.m. Central Time. The space station and the Cygnus cargo vehicle were flying 264 statute miles over the southern Indian Ocean. The call you heard from the space station and here in Mission Control Houston, again, that was uh, Cindy, Cindy Kester, the Capcom for today, uh, relaying that the crew has now wrapped up their exercise. They're putting a constraint to minimize the vibration environment so they can begin, uh, or continue at least, uh, the berthing of Cygnus cargo vehicle for its ninth contracted resupply mission. We call this one OA-9 uh, to the International Space Station.
You're getting a little bit of sunlight reflecting off of the cargo craft and the space station as the uh, orbiting complex and the cargo vehicle orbit uh, around the Earth. We're now 253 statute miles uh, just over Korea, passing over into the Pacific Ocean into an orbital nighttime. Uh, you'll start seeing the views uh, from Cygnus and the International Space Station getting a little bit darker. We'll also be handing over some uh, communication through our uh, TDRS satellites here soon, so uh, we may lose video communications, but we'll update you along the way for the progress of the cargo vehicle. The common berthing mechanism to the right there has uh, 16 bolts, four gangs of four bolts, as well as four latches. Uh, there's several stages of capture. Second stage capture is when all 16 b bolts of the four latches are all holding uh, that Cygnus snugly into place on the International Space Station. That will be the official berthing time for today. Again, capture time from earlier this morning, 4.26 a.m. Central Time. Now, of course, that capture time from this morning, again, 4.26 a.m. Central Time, that was after uh, just about a three-day journey uh, launching from Wallops Flight Facility in uh, Virginia at uh, 3.44 a.m. Central Time, Monday, May 21st. The cargo craft carrying 7,400 pounds of supplies and experiments uh, to the International Space Station launched on top of Orbital ATK's Antares 230 rocket from Pad 0A, again at the Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia. Not long after launch, and, and when it was finally in orbit, the solar arrays were deployed, and it began its journey to the International Space Station. I sat this morning with uh, uh, the mission lead here in Mission Control Houston, uh, Chad Davis for Orbital ATK, who was uh, telling some uh, information on its three-day journey to the International Space Station. Interestingly enough, the cargo craft itself does not fly parallel to the space station as it did um, to get into its uh, capture position. Now that it has been captured and maneuvered uh, right in front of the common berthing mechanism, yeah, this is the view uh, from that mechanism looking down onto the Cygnus cargo craft. This is the window on the, into uh, the Cygnus itself. The robotic arm currently in a hold position, uh, just waiting for the next cue to uh, begin the next sequence of events that will push it uh, into place. Uh, again, at the common berthing mechanism that's on the Nader port or the Earth-facing side of the Unity module.
Now through most of its journey to the uh, International Space Station, that three-day journey from launch on Monday to capture this morning, uh, teams over in Dulles, Virginia have been working very closely with teams here in Mission Control Houston. This is a video from earlier today, shortly after a successful capture at 4.26 a.m. Central Time. The flight controllers over in Dulles, Virginia, uh, donned some hats to uh, has a sort of congratulations and, and celebration for a successful capture and journey to the International Space Station. Again, that uh, that team is led by Tony Foti, the mission director out there. Uh, that dispersed the hats uh, with uh, you can see the clearly the Cygnus uh, Ultraflex solar array, sort of like uh, Mickey Mouse ears on the hats there. A very successful missions for for the teams over there in Dulles, and of course the teams here in Mission Control Houston. Again, we may be uh, getting some uh, loss of communication as we're handing over our uh, TDRS tracking and data relay satellites that provide video from the International Space Station. This is a view of the inside of the International Space Station flight control room in, uh, at the Johnson Space Center here in Houston, Texas. Now, of course, we lost the video communication from the space station, but we're still uh, getting other telemetry and data from the space station. The uh, robotic arm is currently holding in its position just uh, uh, pretty close to the common berthing mechanism where uh, it will be later, the Cygnus cargo vehicle will later be berthed to the space station. It's been quite a series of events to get us into this position, of course, starting with uh, capture. A sort of a quick overview of the events that occurred. Uh, this is an animation of the events uh, in order to go from capture starting at the 250 meter holding point. From that holding point, uh, it goes over into a series of checks, 30 meters, and then of course right here into its captured position uh, from this morning that was about 12 meters away from the space station. It was Scott Tingle and uh, Riggy Arnold, NASA astronauts in the Cupola workstation that used the station's robotic arm to uh, push into place and capture the robotic vehicle, or capture the cargo vehicle. It was then robotics officers on the ground that did this maneuver, to maneuver it into place right in front of the common berthing mechanism of Unity. You can see Unity of a habitable volume is just about the middle of the space station. It's right there that it's positioned right now, just a little bit uh, away from the berthing mechanism. Uh, we're just waiting for confirmation to just sort of push it into place. Again, the uh, station's robotic arm is holding it uh, just a uh, few centimeters away from uh, the common berthing mechanism, just waiting to uh, push it in and begin the series of checks that uh, get us to second stage capture. Again, that's uh, 16 bolts, four gangs of four bolts, and then four latches on top of that. Once everything is driven and, and uh, Cygnus is snugly in place, uh, we'll reveal the official uh, berthing time for the Cygnus cargo vehicle. Now again, uh, we are in an orbital nighttime right now, so by the time uh, we regain communications with the space station, uh, we may be, you may be seeing uh, dark views of the Earth. 
However, the space station and the Cygnus cargo vehicle together now, uh, now that they are captured and attached, are flying at what's called a high beta angle. This means that the relative trajectory of the way the station is flying around the Earth at 17,500 miles per hour uh, comes pretty close uh, to the Terminator line itself. So though we are in an orbital uh, nighttime, the sun may actually be uh, bouncing a little bit of light off of the structure of the International Space Station and Cygnus itself. Of course, this puts a little bit of uh, thermal constraints on the systems, uh, so they are being carefully monitored, monitored by the uh, Spartan for today. They use the thermal, uh, thermal flight controller in the room, um, Alex Apian. Now we uh, regain communications, of course, these are live views. The station is now 253 statute miles uh, over the North Pacific Ocean, just south off the coast of Alaska. Now, again, we're flying at this high beta angle, uh, pretty close to the Terminator line, so the sun is still reflecting off of the structure uh, of the International Space Station. Of course, there's a lot of equipment on board uh, Cygnus today, 7,400 pounds of supplies and experiments. Lots of experiments on board, uh, brand new experiments, uh, so, and then some revisiting as well. Uh, one is called the BEST, the Biomolecule Extraction and Sequencing Technology. Sort of, this is sort of a follow-on to the DNA sequencing events that we've done previously on board the International Space Station, of course, recently. Uh, sequencing DNA on board the space station um, 
uh, for the first time in microgravity. But this best investigation studies the use of sequencing for the identification of unknown microbial organisms living on the space station, and then for understanding how humans and plants and microbes adapt to living on the station. Space Station now uh, 251 statute miles above the Earth, uh, flying on a southeasterly course uh, just west off the coast of California, uh, and yet a little bit east of Hawaii. Now again, we're in the orbital nighttime, but with this high beta angle, we're still sort of skimming the Terminator line as we circle around the globe, getting a little bit of sun uh, bouncing off of the Cygnus cargo craft today. Now, as we're waiting, the uh, uh, robotics officers are holding the station's robotic arm and the Cygnus cargo vehicle on, uh, attached to it, uh, just a little bit away from the common berthing mechanism, where it will be berthed later today, again, holding uh, at that position. In the meantime, we'll be taking hashtag AskNASA questions. This one is from Zora, who's asking why astronauts wear face masks uh, when they're unloading cargo. Of course, after the uh, Cygnus is berthed uh, today, it'll be some time until they do some pressure checks and leak checks, and then eventually open the hatch to enter uh, later. And then after that, it might take a few weeks, depending on the crew member's schedule, uh, to actually unload the cargo and bring it in. But when they open the hatch and actually enter for the first time, they wear masks and, uh, in addition to goggles, 
uh, before entering the cargo vehicle. This is just in case there were any loose items. Uh, of course, launching a cargo vehicle requires a lot of uh, vibration uh, for the cargo vehicle to withstand when leaving the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, so just to make sure that nothing is shifted out of place or floating randomly uh, inside, especially those small pieces that may affect uh, the astronaut's face or eyes or, or, um, or mouth. Of course, this is a precautionary measure and uh, uh, once they determine that the inside of the cargo vehicle is indeed clear, uh, they'll remove those masks and continue with unloading cargo. Now again, this is an orbital nighttime, so it's a little bit hard to tell, but the robot, the uh, station's arm is in motion, moving closer to the coming berthing mechanism, uh, one of a series of steps to actually berth the cargo vehicle to the International Space Station. This is a view from the common berthing mechanism uh, of the International Space Station looking down directly onto uh, the window of the, um, uh, of the Cygnus cargo vehicle. The lights itself are coming from uh, the berthing mechanism cameras. The robotics officer has pushed it into place and some of the ready-to-latch indicators are starting to go green. They'll perform a series of checks before actually driving the 16 bolts and latches that secure it into place for second stage capture. Now, as the International Space Station flies 250 statue miles, again, hugging the horizon of the Terminator line that separates orbital nighttime from daytime, uh, we're just west off the coast of Mexico right now, flying over the Pacific Ocean. At this time, we have four uh, green-lit, ready-to-latch indicators. Um, now we'll begin a, a series of commands to drive those 16 bolts and four latches, securing the orbital ATK Cygnus into place.
Flight controllers working in tandem on the ground here, uh, working with the station's uh, robotic arm and uh, looking at the uh, bolts and latches on the common berthing mechanism that's going to uh, officially berth the cargo vehicle to the International Space Station. Working through a series of checks, we'll start. We'll see uh, the sun start to slowly peek over the horizon here as we're hugging the Terminator line on an orbital southeasterly trajectory over from orbital darkness into daytime. The robotics officer uh, has a series of modes to uh, work the station's robotic arm and work it again in tandem with uh, making sure the common berthing mechanism is ready uh, to capture the vehicle. First stage capture is complete and the uh, station's robotic arm is in a mode uh, that will allow for the second stage capture, again driving those 16 bolts and four latches that will secure the cargo vehicle to the space station. A lot of the work being done in between the segment that's uh, uh, where the Cygnus cargo vehicle is meeting the space station. Again, four latches, 16 bolts. First step is the four latches being driven to uh, secure uh, the Cygnus into place as the first part of this second stage capture. Once confirmed, they'll start uh, going around to do the 16 bolts. Four latches are secure. Now in progress are the 16 bolts.
while the bolts uh, continue to drive, you can see a great view of the Cygnus cargo vehicle being uh, more and more illuminated as we're crossing over the Terminator line into an orbital daytime. Again, the pressurized volume is that metallic uh, tin can-like structure in the front and in the back are all sort of the brains of the vehicle. Uh, most prominent are, you can see, the white structure that's sort of at the top of the screen of the uh, of the service module in the back with all the uh, sort of foil-looking components. That white structure is the CubeSat deployer that will deploy a series of, of Nanorex CubeSats um, that uh, after the vehicle has uh, uh, unloaded all of its cargo into the space station and then departed. The black structures in front are uh, the uh, LiDAR communications that sort of uh, point a laser at the space station and provide um, uh, range uh, data uh, for how close or far the Cygnus cargo vehicle is to the station uh, upon the capture procedures. Again, uh, we are in the middle of second stage capture. The uh, four latches uh, have, are holding the cargo vehicle into place while the robotic arm is in sort of a limp position to allow the berthing mechanism to do most of the work here. Currently driving are the 16 bolts. Station on two for CBCS. Go ahead on two. Just wondering if you guys are ready for me to start pulling down the uh, centerline berthing camera system. Checking. We need to put safing in place. Um, once that com that is complete, we'll let you know, and then we'll be ready for you to get ahead on your activity. Okay, sounds good. Just give me a call when the uh, camera port is safe, and then I'll tear it down. We'll go.
Now from here in uh, Mission Control Houston, we have confirmation that all 16 bolts are driven, the four latches are secured, and we have confirmed second stage berthing of the Cygnus cargo vehicle to the International Space Station, 7.13 a.m. Central Time. The International Space Station flying 254 statue miles over the South Pacific Ocean just west off the coast of Chile. Station Houston on two for Drew and CBCS. Night City, we're listening on two. Safing is in place, uh, so we're go for the CBCS uh, removal activity. Also, while I have you guys, A bolts are complete, therefore, the no exercise constraint is lifted. Copy all. That's great news and uh, great work to the team. Thank you. Some congratulatory words from uh, Scott Tingle aboard the International Space Station. Uh, of course, uh, we have confirmed second stage capture. Uh, that confirms the official berthing of the Cygnus cargo vehicle to the International Space Station. That happened at 7.13 a.m. Central Time today. Space Station was 253 statute miles over the South Pacific, just west off the coast of Chile. That comes a little under three hours after a capture this morning, 4.26 a.m. Central Time. Uh, the space station at that time was 264 statute miles over the southern Indian Ocean. And of course, congratulatory words uh, to the flight teams here in Mission Control Houston, and of course to the flight control teams in Dulles, Virginia of Orbital ATK's uh, teams led by Mission Director Tony Foti. Before we wrap up coverage today of a successful capture and berthing of the Cygnus' uh, ninth contracted cargo resupply mission to the International Space Station, looking ahead, lots of uh, dynamic activities coming up, starting with the landing of Scott Tingle, who you just heard uh, call down, uh, as well as Norshige Kanai and Anton Shkaplerov on Sunday, June 3rd. You can, uh, you can tune into that coverage beginning at 6.15 a.m. Central Time, looking for a landing at 7.38 a.m. Central Time. Not too long afterwards will be the launch of three new crew members, uh, Serena on and Chancellor as well as Al Alexander uh, Gerst. Uh, we'll be launching to the space station on June uh, 6th. Coverage begins at 5.15 a.m. Central Time. Uh, we're looking for a launch at 6.11 Central Time. It won't be very long until those crew members are aboard the International Space Station. Again, they're looking at a two-day rendezvous. So that, that completes today's coverage of uh, the grapple and berthing of Cygnus' uh, ninth contracted cargo resupply mission to the International Space Station. Installation complete at 7.13 a.m. Central Time after a capture at 4.26 a.m. Central Time. That wraps up our coverage today. This is Mission Control Houston.